Hey guys, so what am I working on now? Well, I'm working on that Honda that I made the short video on. The one with the, uh, needs a transmission, but it's only an axle. Uh, I'm going to show you what i got to do to change it. Now on these, especially up north vehicles, and this vehicle appears to have been up, maybe up north for part of its life, because it does have some, some rust. And hey, the axle rusted and snapped in two. But on these Hondas and any other vehicle like this, that, or have this type of suspension design, one problem that comes into play is this. You have to undo this bolt to get the axle to pass through this wishbone. It's like a wishbone design here. The problem is a lot of times this bolt gets seized in this bushing and it becomes an absolute nightmare at that point. So what am I going to do? I don't even know at this point. I'm going to start taking stuff apart and see how it goes. Uh, first off, you've got to take the axle nut off. And then we're going to try to get that clevis, that wishbone, whatever you want to call it, get that bolt out. That bushing's got a steel sleeve in it. This bolt has a tendency to rot into that sleeve. And when they do, they don't want to come apart. They become, like I said, a hassle. So let me see how it goes, how it comes apart. But like I said, I got a funny feeling this was an up north vehicle at some point, just judging by the rust on it. The rust air on that. So, all right. Let me get my tripod and let's get going with this. All right, I may not be able to show you all the nitty gritty details on this video, but let's see, because we're pretty busy today. Oh, wrong size. Let me, get, let me get the right size for that. Hang on. All right, so it's a 36 millimeter, my bad. So now with that off, what we're going to try to do is we're going to take that out. That's a 17 millimeter, and it's a nut and a bolt. So, what I always try to do is take the nut off first without holding the other side. And the reason being is because 9 times out of 10, or 99 times out of 100, I should say, if it spins the bolt, it'll come out. Plus, if to any chance of it spinning a bolt, like it has some kind of movement in it, doing this will help basically loosen up any of the rust that's in there to help get the bolt out. Because, like I said, that can really that can really kill this job. All right. So with that nut off. See, the biggest problem is they put these like almost like knurls on here and you can see it's got some rust on it but the rust builds up and just absolutely jams in there so all right on to the next step all right so we're just going to rip the cotter pin out a lot of times what i'll do is i'll try to snap one of the ends off because in all honesty it makes life a lot easier going back together And a lot of times I'll try to straighten the other one out as much as possible. And the reason for that is if you tap it inward to get the other end to stick out. This way when the other end sticks out, you have something to grab a hold of. All right. So this should be 19. I'm actually surprised it's coming apart as nicely as it is, considering this thing does have some rust on it. So, what's the next step? I gotta separate this. I gotta separate the, uh, the ball joint. Now, bigger picture. If you use a pickle fork in there to separate this, you're gonna damage the boot. Prefer not to. So a lot of times what you do is, you have gotta wail into this thing with a hammer and the shock will help squeeze it slightly, you know, like this. It's got a taper into it. 
but it'll the shock of hitting this with a hammer this way will squeeze it slightly and a lot of times it'll shoot this out or there are special tools like um, like pullers basically uh, but they're actually used to press through instead of pull out so let me decide what I'm going to do here and then we'll have to figure it out from there so what I decided to do was hit this with a hammer let me try it that way first I put the nut on there just in case I miss and I hit this I, this way I don't destroy the threads or if I come in at an angle I don't destroy the threads whoops <laughs> sorry about that let me shut that light off because that's not going to stay let me turn this light on because that one will stay So now it's separated. Now you got to be careful too. You don't want to go absolutely bananas hitting that because you can ruin it. I've seen people hit that so hard they've actually cracked it. See that? So now it comes out. All right. So with that being out like that, you can tap the end of the axle in. That part. Now, if you're reusing the axle, you got to be mindful. You may want to use a punch or something when doing this. But since we're not reusing the axle, I don't really care. Now, one thing that will help you out too when dealing with stuff like this the wheel on the other side, since the steering linkage is to the back, if I cut the wheel on the other side to the left, it's going to push the steering linkage further out this way. It'll give me more room to swing stuff, but you got to be also mindful of your ABS and your uh, hydraulic brake lines. So with that being out like that, I have more room to move this. See that? So now the axle comes out, but you got to be see like there's an ABS wire. Got to be mindful of that. Let's take a good look at this axle. You see that? You could see where it rotted and got in, and then eventually just fatigued and snapped. All right, let me see what's involved in getting that other piece out. Some of them have a collar bearing that you have to undo. Well, let me see what this has. Now, for that inner piece there, I have to use a drift and go against the backside here and then hit that with a hammer and it should release and come out. I'm going to have to have you watch from this side and hopefully you can see what I'm doing. We shall see. I don't know if you saw that, but I missed the drift with my hammer. I am absolutely terrible with a hammer, and I won't be the first to admit it. Absolutely terrible. Always have been. Like right now, I'm actually pretty impressed that I didn't break the tail light or the back window doing that. I am that bad with a hammer. Okay. So now that that's released, we can pull this piece out. And it can join rest of it on the floor there so now you've heard me talk about this before see the clip in there that right there that clip make sure the opening is to the top because if it's hanging down low like that it's hanging down low like that you can actually drive one of these ends over into the spine and you'll jam everything up. However, if you have it like this, with the opening to the top, it'll never happen. Plus this way, it'll actually squeeze together and roll into place. Now, one thing I did, to, did do also is I disconnected the ABS line just to give me that freedom to allow this to move without possibly possibly damaging that 
So I'm just waiting for the axle to show up and uh, yeah, so once it gets here, we'll put it in. She did not want to do the other axle just yet. She doesn't have the money for it just yet. So we're just gonna do the one side for now. All right, so using a uh, ratchet strap, I pulled the um, knuckle assembly out of the way, just to keep it kind of clear of what I'm doing. And I moved this wishbone or clevis, whatever you want to call it, to this side of the lower control arm. The lower control arm does move, but I used the lower control arm back up in place to hold this forward. So now, what I do is I do this to get the axle in place. So now, with it like this, I can actually come underneath, and I know you can't see me, but I can come underneath. I can view where the axle is and get the axle started into place. So this is where it gets a little bit tricky because you got to deal with the clevis and everything else. Plus, I would actually prefer this a little further out of the way. Let me move you. It's actually not a ratchet strap. I forgot what the heck it's called. It's a matter of just getting everything in line and knocking the axle in place. See, this can actually go out further. You just got to be careful of, like I said, the brake hoses and stuff like that. Let me find a way to prop this. I might have to jam a block of wood in there unless I get this thing caught, which I might be able to. All right, let's do that. I got to shut this off because it's blinding me while I'm trying to do it. All right, I actually used a pole jack to hold this up and out of the way a little bit. So now that I got the center or the inner joint lined up, I take a soft face hammer and hit this, and hopefully I get, I get it to go in like it's supposed to. Yo! All right, a little finagling on the inside there just to get the, um, the joint level because it was kind of at a slight angle trying to go into the other shaft. So that should be in now. Yeah, it's butt up. So that's in place. All right. So, like I always say, reverse procedure to install. What I usually do too is I will spray WD-40 on stuff like that. Just make sure everything goes back nice, nice. Um, yeah, so it should. Let's see. All right. All right, so I just moved the pole jack out of the way. We release this strap. This works This works excellent whenever you're doing stuff like this where you got to pull it out of the way. You just got to be mindful of your brake hoses, ABS stuff. And we're going to line this up in here. And then let's grab some WD because let's spray some WD on stuff. I had some here. Where did I put it? Hang on. All right. So this little WD never hurt nothing. Sometimes you gotta spin the rotor to make the splines line up to get stuff to start going into one another. So that's gonna be a combination of lift and tuck and tuck and lift. And of course the camera's on the way. Let's see if I can't maneuver like that. Sometimes you just gotta wiggle it to get it to get closer. All right, so that's all going together nice, nice. Get this clevis down closer. Now 
Now when I get to a point like that too, I will put the ball joint nut on loosely. And the reason for that is, so if I'm maneuvering stuff around, I don't accidentally pop the ball joint back out because that makes your life a little bit of a pain. Oh, did I booger up the threads here? No, there it goes. Okay. Sometimes if you're not exactly in line the way it's supposed to be, stuff won't go back together. Sometimes, too, with this lower clevis, because it's got to go around that bushing, sometimes you got to finagle it in place and stuff like that. Sometimes you got to get in there with a very small hammer and tap it just to get it to go where you want it to go. I'm going to try using a hammer and drift. If I can, I can't even do that, can I? Let's see about the other side. Pull jack out of the way. Sorry about that. Yeah, this one's not lined up yet. All right, well, you get the idea. Let me do this until everything lines up. I didn't realize you weren't on it. I apologize for that. There you are. So now you can, depending on your application, depending on what you're doing, sometimes it's easier to put the bolt in, in from a different direction. And if that's the case, it's not a big deal. Just pay attention and make sure when steering linkages are articulating, and stuff like that, that it might not catch the bolt or hit the bolt in a weird way because there may be a very specific reason they put it in in a certain direction. So let me center that up. All right, now with that closer, I'm just gonna take this bar stick in there, try to align it as best as possible. I'm gonna tap that in place. You don't want to just ramshackle a bolt in place too because then you're going to destroy the threads in the very beginning. So now the ball joint nuts in place. I'm going to tighten that up by hand. That I'm just going to blast down with a gun, honestly. And then we have to put the axle nut on and torque that, and then we're all done with this. Now I'm going to go off the fact that you guys probably don't have torque wrenches because you're doing it in your driveway. So how do you know you're tight enough on a on a ball joint, let's say? You don't have to lean into it. You don't have to, you know, go, ah, and you'll put all your body weight into it. I mean, <clears throat> that's plenty tight. That's not going to go nowhere. Now I'm going to stick a cotter pin in that, too. So let's go grab a cotter pin and stick it in there. All right, so we're going to stick this in. I've gotten a whole bunch of uh, different comments from people on that video that I made about cotter pins. Now there's a couple different ways you can go. You can bring this down, you can spread it off to the sides. Now it depends on what you're doing I think, but is there really a wrong and a right way to put in a cotter pin? I guess it depends on application. It really does. It depends on what you're doing. A cotter pin is just a redundant safety. That's really all it is. It's not going to go nowhere. It's fine. So what's right, what's wrong? Something like this, it's just a redundant safety. That's all it is. Some people would say, oh, you should put a washer in there. Well, you know what? It's the original ball joint with the original nut on the original lower control arm. That's how it was. You know? Yeah, there's a gap in there. That's how it was. There's a bunch of different people saying a bunch of different things. Oops. Yes. 
depending on application, if it's something critical, they have very specific ways of putting in cotter pins. I get it. I understand that. When you're dealing with a car like this, when you have something tightened correctly, when you have something torqued correctly, I have never once in my life seen a nut back off that was tightened correctly originally. So if it's tightened correctly and you put the cotter pin in, whether you bring the tails down one way or you bring them to the side, or if there's a gap in between, it's not going to go nowhere. It's going to be, it's going to be fine. Um, you can say whatever you want. It's, you know, that's fine. I get it. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I don't have an issue with something like that. It's absolutely fine. I've seen from the factory, I wish I could remember what cars it was, but I've seen from the factory where they didn't even have a castellated nut. They had flat nuts with a cotter pin. So now what? I wish I could remember the cars. Happened when I was working in the uh, 80s and 90s. I remember several vehicles. I just cannot recall the model. And it was from the factory too, so. But whatever, uh, yeah, so let me go on and let's torque that nut. All right, so we're gonna torque the axle nut. It's 242 foot-pounds, which is substantial, actually. Uh-oh, what do you do now? 242 is pretty substantial. You're not gonna have somebody hit the brakes and hold it and be able to hold that back. I mean, you probably could, but it's gonna take something. But let's say you're by yourself, what do you do? I've gone over this before. Put a punch or something in there. Make sure it's something decent so you don't snap it. And now this is going to go to 242. Ugh. That's pretty substantial. So if you're using a breaker bar or whatever to do that, could I go tighter? Absolutely. But that's a pretty substantial number. Most of the times axle nuts are like in the lower 100s. This is 242. Like I said, pretty good number there. So now with this, I also have to peen over the end of the nut there. So what I'm going to have to do, let's see if you can see that. I've got to peen the end of the nut over to fold into that spot there. That's basically, that's what they use to lock it in place. You know, they don't use a cotter pin on this design. They just knock that in place. So let me get something to do that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a chisel and smack that down. If you didn't have a chisel, you can take a screwdriver and put the screwdriver like this. So the tip is like this, as if you're trying to take out a screw that's up here. And then you smack the screwdriver on its side. That would work too. So let's see. Am I doing this and not blocking? You know, and just like a cotter pin, that's the idea behind it. It's just a redundant piece to keep it from backing off if or if it should happen to become loose it keeps it from backing off these are not super effective but yeah it does work it's called staking let's get the wheel on let's get it for a road test i remember me just talking about cotter pins and how i seen flat nuts with no castle on it there you go i remember seeing it on something and that's factory i remember seeing these things when they were brand new so those of you commenting on the cotter pin video, I understand where you're coming from. But no, it does not have to fit into the castles perfectly. It does not have to. What's the, point of, what's the point of a cotter pin on that? It's just a redundant safety. That's all. All right. I basically just went underneath there, so I just wanted to double check everything. I always do that. And everything looks good. So now I'm going to let it down and make sure I don't have a blown tranny. All right. Will it go in gear? Just started it up. Let's see. Look at that. All right, we're gonna take it for a quick road test and see what she does. All right, so everything went good on a road test. This thing's got a bad wheel bearing too. I don't know if you can hear that. It's pretty noisy. So, but yeah, the road test went fine. Everything seems good. So it was just a broken axle. Uh, yeah, so that's it. 
So hopefully you got something out of that. If you're getting something out of my videos, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.